such a velocity is called instantaneous velocity. But how is this quantity defined? At a given instant, a moving object is at one given position. Does it make sense to define the velocity at a given moment in time or at a given position on its path? Well, the answer is yes. The general idea is to shrink the time interval over which the velocity is calculated to a very, very short one. Let's have a look at the following animation. The green ball moves from A to D along the path marked with a dashed line. B and C are two intermediary points. TA, TB, TC and TD indicate the moments in time when the ball is at point A, B, C and D respectively. Let's try to calculate the average speed and the magnitude of the average velocity for various sections of this motion. In all calculations, we take A as the initial position. For the entire motion from A to D, the average speed is the length of the path from A to D divided by the time interval TD minus TA. The magnitude of the average velocity is the length of the displacement AD divided by the same time interval. The two are obviously different. Now, let's concentrate on a shorter section, AC. The two quantities can be calculated as shown on the screen. Similarly, the two quantities can be calculated for an even shorter section of the motion, AB. We can continue this process by taking the final position closer and closer to the initial position. The corresponding time interval gets shorter and shorter. Now, as the final position considered in our calculations gets closer and closer to the initial starting point, the difference between the average speed and the magnitude of average velocity decreases, as in these cases, the difference between the distance along the path and the displacement in straight line gets smaller and smaller. It's not hard to imagine that for a very small time interval, there is almost no difference between the value of the average speed and the magnitude of average velocity. This brings us to the definition of instantaneous velocity, or simply, velocity. The instantaneous velocity is defined as the displacement divided by the time interval when the time interval is very short. In mathematics, you would say that the time interval approaches zero or tends to become zero. In other words, the instantaneous velocity is the average velocity over an infinitesimally short time interval. We can tell the instantaneous speed of a car by looking at its speedometer. Instantaneous speed is simply the magnitude of instantaneous velocity. Why is that? Well, the reason is that when a very short time interval is considered, the distance traveled is equal to the size of the displacement. What about the direction of instantaneous velocity vector? Let's consider again a green ball in motion. Its trajectory is shown by the dashed line. For those of you who don't know what trajectory means, here is a quick definition. It is the path described by a moving object. Instantaneous velocity, or simply velocity, has its direction tangent to the trajectory. The vector nature of velocity is indicated by an arrow above the symbol of the quantity. As indicated before, the word instantaneous is often omitted. When we talk about average velocity, we specifically use the word average, whereas when we speak about instantaneous velocity, we tend to call it simply velocity. On a side note, you might think that if the time interval is very very short, the value of the speed or velocity gets closer and closer to zero. That is not the case. Just remember that the displacement and the distance traveled get smaller too. Therefore, the ratio of two small numbers can have any value. Let's consider a simple example. 0 0.007 divided by 0 0.002 is 3.5. Now, before we move on, let's quickly introduce a symbol used very often in physics. Delta is a Greek letter that is used to indicate the change in a physical quantity. Let's consider, for example, a generic physical quantity A. Delta A means change in A, or final value of A minus initial value of A. 
Note that if A is a vector, A final minus A initial refers to vector subtraction. Let's now consider a very simple example of a one-dimensional motion. In other words, the motion occurs along a straight line. In a one-dimensional motion, we can keep track of the position of an object by using an axis on which we choose an origin and then select what we consider to be our positive direction. In this case, axis OX. Its positive direction is to the right. The position of the car in relation to the origin O can be indicated by a positive or a negative number, called the x-coordinate of the car. In our very simple example, the car has the position x1 at the instant t1 and it moves to a different position x2 that is reached at the moment in time t2. In this case, displacement can be calculated as the final position minus the initial position. It can be a positive number or a negative number, depending on in which way the car moves in relation to what we consider to be our positive direction. The time interval delta t is simply the difference between t final and t initial, in this case t2 minus t1. The average velocity is then v equals delta x over delta t or x2 minus x1 over t2 minus t1. Now that we have both speed and velocity properly defined, we can go ahead and discuss a worked example. The car shown on the screen moves from A to C. We want to determine, or to calculate, the average speed and the average velocity for each section of the journey, as well as for the entire journey. Let's start with the AB section of the journey. The distance travelled is 480 meters in 32 seconds. This gives us an average velocity of 15 meters per second. The displacement is x final minus x initial. 580 minus 100 equals 480 meters in 32 seconds. This gives us a velocity of 15 meters per second. And because the result is a positive number, the direction of the velocity vector coincides with what we consider to be the positive direction, to the right. Notice that here, the magnitude of the average velocity is equal to the average speed. Let's now move on to section BC. The distance traveled is 180 meters in 18 seconds. This gives us an average velocity of 10 meters per second. The displacement is x final minus x initial or 400 minus 580, which gives us a displacement of minus 180 meters in 18 seconds. The average velocity is then minus 10 meters per second. The minus sign indicates that the velocity vector is in an opposite direction to what we consider to be our positive direction. That means that the direction of the velocity is to the left. Here again, the magnitude of the average velocity is equal to the average speed. Let's now calculate the two quantities for the entire journey. The total distance traveled is 480 plus 180 equals 660 meters in 50 seconds. This gives us an average velocity of 13.2 meters per second. The displacement is x final minus x initial. 400 minus 100 equals 300 meters in 50 seconds. This gives us an average velocity of 6 meters per second. And since this value is a positive number, the direction of the velocity is to the right. Here, the magnitude of average velocity is no longer equal to the average speed. An average velocity of 13.2 meters per second tells us that during the journey the car covers on average 13.2 meters each second. An average velocity of 6 meters per second tells us that after 50 seconds the car is now 6 times 50 equals 300 meters to the right of the starting point.